Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to keep this intro super, super short. Just give you the basics of what we're doing here. Then I'm going to bring Angela on because she has a very limited time with us. So I want to honor her time. I want to honor your time. And then in about an hour and 15 minutes, then we can talk for hours about the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania um, convention because I'll have the rest of the night. Um, along the bottom, you see the typical links. I'm not going to spend time on that. But what I am going to say is that obviously all super chats matter. And like I do every time I've been on with Angela before, which has been once or twice, if anyone feels you know, like they would like to bless us with a super chat. Whenever I have Angela on, they get split equally between her campaign and mine. Obviously, you are not obligated to do that. Your comments are welcome no matter what. But anyone who does choose to give via super chat, it will be split 50-50 between both of our campaigns. I like to do that to show my support for Angela. Now, apparently, the opponents of changing the culture of this party and changing the effectiveness of this party have decided to sink to a new low. And I woke up this morning after a very long trip to just being flooded with messages of some social media posts that were claiming that behind the scenes during the whole time of the time I'd like to forget about in my life, the whole time when the LNC was trying to remove me, uh, that Angela was was doing these machinations behind my back and secretly supported my removal and apparently was this great mastermind of evil. And I was just like, first of all, for all of you, never believed it for a second. I knew exactly what was going on. This is a typical divide and conquer. And I don't want to have to deal with this for the next two months. Neither did Angela. We immediately started talking and said, why don't we do a show together? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about what actually happened. And then if anyone has any questions in the future, we will simply link them to the show. This is going to be the end of it tonight. Uh, let me just say right at the beginning, because some people only watch the beginning. Angela is my dear friend. I support her 100% completely. This stuff is complete and utterly false. But let's get to the truth of the matter. Now I got to figure out how to bring her on because you know me and my technical things. And I know I am going to have to scoot over a little here. But let me let's see here. Add Angela to my right. Now I need to scoot over here. Here we go. Let's see if we can hear your sound, Angela. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Perfectly. Okay. Thank you so much. So, yes, we've had a good morning, haven't we? <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, I think it started last night. I'm. This is the, probably the most low energy um, live stream I've done in a while. I am the low energy Jeb of the LP right now. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> Please clap. I'm just really tired, really tired. And I'm sure that people who dislike us would like to capitalize on that and wear us down and have us fighting. But I think that the attempts are really transparent. I mean, I mean, what I should say is I surprised. I am the secret LNC secretary and um, I have been working <laughs> behind your back to do uh, crappy minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just caught the second part. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to grace my screen with the screenshots i was had them ready and then i'm like forget it we know what they said yeah. i'm not going to grace my screen with them but basically in a bunch of delegate groups an lnc member we are going to try to avoid mentioning names here except where it's necessary we are not going to overly demonize people here we're trying to to be an example but we do have to defend what in fact happened, at least to me personally, it was very, very hurtful as if these people haven't done enough to me to then try to drive a wedge in a friendship. And there's two things that are going on here. Angela and I are personal friends. Like when I'm hurting, Angela will write to me and offer to pray with me. We're that kind of friendship. But we're also 
working in a political party and we have a political relationship as well and there are political realities that involve trying to work out compromises and things like that and that's what a lot of this is about and to act like this was some kind of backstabbing is so ridiculous so john phillips posted in a group um and angela might remember more but i only read it a couple times because it just really just broke my heart that you know that during the whole removal meeting that that angela was roving from person to person telling them how you know they should vote to remove me and how it was the right thing to do and how she personally swayed his vote on a phone call and all of this and i would and then richard longstreth pipes in on at least one of these comments I, he didn't comment on everyone a lot of people didn't see his comment but his comment is saying, yes, everything John said is is absolutely true. And Angela came to me in the hallway afterwards and hugged me and told me what a good vote I made. These are paraphrases. I might have a few words wrong, but I think I'm getting it basically right. And, you know, you guys did the right thing type of thing. And it seems very transparent to me that this was just trying to drive a wedge between between Angela and myself. Um but I would like Angela, in her own words, describe, like, what actually happened. Um, I was aware of everything that was happening, and this is what is called politics. And I find what they're doing is really gross. But before she starts, the one thing I want to say is the first thing that struck me about what they said. You know, so basically they're saying Angela is this terrible, deceitful person who, ba who backstabbed me, basically. And that she's been lying to everybody for nine months now about how she supports me. Let's pretend that was true. This means that John Phillips and Richard Longstreth have stayed silent about this big con that Angela was allegedly perpetrating for nine months, but said nothing about it for nine months. If that were true, what does that say about them? And if it's not true, which it isn't, what does that say about them? There is no scenario in which these two look like good people. Just when I think I couldn't be surprised any further about how low some people will go, they're overachievers. Like, it's just... And I, the last thing I needed was this emotional roller coaster again. But now, Angela, I'm going to turn it over to you to say, like, what actually happened. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you got removed. That sucked. But while it was all going down, uh, I did have a conversation with Chris Lucchini, who approached me. Um, and he was interested in having a, a conversation about trying to swap you out for another Mises person. And I was very diplomatic. And I listened to him and I wanted to convey that I was taking his concerns about board professionalism ca carefully, you know, like, I, you know, I, I hear you, I hear what you're saying, what's going on. And so, uh, you know, he wanted to swap you out for me. Okay, so I said no. <laughs> um, and I also asked, uh, how do you think that would look? And he was like, well, maybe that wouldn't look very good. Oh, okay. And, and uh, said, do you, do you think that you would get the rest of the board to actually vote for that? Because that seemed to be what he was implying. And, and he sort of backtracked and was like, oh, well, but, yeah, you, no, I mean, you, you, you could have my vote. So I thought, okay, well, it seems kind of sus uh, on a few different levels, but fine. So I called Michael Heiss and I let him know, you know, what offer had been made and that I had been chatting with Lucini. And of course, Michael Heiss was like, no. So we were both like, no. And I communicated that as professionally and non-confrontationally as possible. And I had a follow-up call with uh, Mr. Lucchini, I don't know, a few weeks later to let him know that the answer was still no. And, you know, my perspective on these things is the reality is I might have to work with some of them again in the future. That is not my preference. I'm hoping that we get a Mises board in. But in the event that I do have to work with people, I don't want them to hate my guts. So it wouldn't be in good form for me to scream F you in Lucini's face and throw a big fit. Um, I will tell you though that, yeah, this is important. So after I was like, no, that's not gonna happen. I actually did work with, with Chris while Karen Ann was in the room at, at the meeting 
in Kentucky to try to work out a compromise. And in my opinion, the compromise was not going to be something Karen Ann accepted and that it was a little bit too much, a lot too much in favor of the rest of the board that was going to vote her off. But at that point, I was like, well, we're just going to do what we can to try to mitigate this and eliminate Karen Ann getting kicked off. And I did communicate to, to Lucini uh, that if he removed her, she was going to become a martyr and people were going to really rally behind her, you know, and that probably isn't what he wants since he's talking about removing her. And so we chatted and we chatted with Wayne, Karen Ann's husband, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's all on video that you can see us kind of chatting with Wayne to try to work out a compromise motion. And we just ran out of time. And I think I even saw Chris Lucini raise his hand to try to get a recess or, you know, get get uh, Whitney's attention to try to call, get a short little timeout so we could chat with Karen Ann and go over a couple of final details. But it was shot down, you know, like Whitney didn't, she either didn't acknowledge Lucini or she told him to put his hand down. And then the vote happened and the rest is history. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that people in the Mises Caucus say about me is that I'm pretty good at conflict resolution and de-escalation. And I think that this sort of triangulating behavior and the fact that this little social media rumor would come out the same day that the Pennsylvania convention happened and there's a lot of tears over that, it really reveals that these people are not interested in conflict resolution because they take all of my attempts at de-escalation and try to use them to escalate conflict and so further discord and drama, which is not what we need. And I was, the, the point I want people to know is I was aware of all yeah. of these compromise attempts that were going on. I was making my own compromise attempts. I was on the phone with Michael Heiss. I was on the phone with Angela. I was on chats with a lot of different people. I was on chats with Steve Nicola. A lot of us were trying to make compromise motions. And I will make it clear, not because I think I was wrong. And I don't even know, like Angela and I don't agree on everything 100% and we never will. But you notice I've never lit her up because I know she's a person of integrity. The only time I go after people is when I think I, they're being corrupt. But I was aware of all of this. And why was I willing to compromise when I didn't think I was wrong? Because I didn't want to see the rift in the party that has happened. And even when they were re trying to allegedly replace me with John Wilford, I was still offering a compromise. I had always been willing to compromise. That is why Dustin Nana offered the censor motion at that same meeting. Do I think I was worthy of being censored alone? No, I thought the whole damn LNC should have been censored. But I was willing to compromise to the last moment. Angela was not doing anything behind my back. She was talking to Chris Lucini right in front of me and Wayne. So all of this coming out like this is just absolutely ridiculous and the fact that they would try to drive a wedge between two friends to me it's oh to me it's always people before politics to me it's always people before politics and i value angela's friendship more than any political relationship but again there is also a political relationship and she and i are not going to agree on everything not now not when she is hopefully elected chair and i am hopefully re-elected secretary but angela and i a long time ago um most people don't know this we had a very very candid talk where angela talked to me she's like you tend to really go after these board members. That's not something I want to see on a future LNC. And what I said to Angela was, as long as no one is corrupt, you have absolutely nothing to fear from me. People forget in 2016 to 2018, there was none of this. I believe that people can agree, disagree agreeably. And she and I have done that. And we will, I'm sure, do that in the future, hopefully when we're both elected. Um, it's corruption that I despise. People disagree. People disagree all the time. Last night, you probably saw me having a reasonable disagreement with Glenn Tuttle about even the Mises Caucus, even though he was being quite inflammatory. So none of this was done behind anyone's back. And this was just super, super low. And I want you all to take it for what it's worth. Look at the timing. If this were true, this should have came out in September and October. But it is not true. All of the compromising was done with my blessing. And as you saw, Angela even said, no, she's not going to accept that. 
Angela might have wished I accepted a bigger compromise and that and she might have and she's entitled to that. We don't have to agree on everything and we aren't going to agree on everything. But I am 100% behind her. I never for a second believe these and I just think this is super, super low for both of these men who have already done a lot of emotional harm to come and try to do this. And they try to be the woke champion of women, yet they're trying to cause a cat fight. That's basically what they're trying to do. And I just think that is super, super gross. Now, there were some questions in chat that um, I would um, like to um, put here. Um, but for the record, because you and I talked about this, you did not hug Richard Longstreth. There was a hug involved. Would you like to speak about a hug that happened? Oh, yeah. So if anybody watched the video, the live stream, or was there, you know that like half the room was crying at the end of that time. And Erin Adams was particularly upset. And I think I did hug her when we walked out. And that was also the first point in time that I'd actually ever spoken a word to Richard Longstreth, which I kind of felt bad about because I'm running for chair, he's on the board. I probably should have spoken to him sooner at some point. But no, there I didn't hug him. That it was very awkward. It was a very awkward time. You know, Aaron was very emotional. So were other people. I understand why she was upset. And I was trying very hard to be diplomatic and respectful of everybody, but I didn't hug Richard Longstreth. I, I didn't know him. That would have been weird. So that's not true. Um, yeah, so you didn't I wish whisper sweet not... nothings about what a great vote he made. <laughs> no, yeah, there were no whispers about a great vote. Uh, I told Aaron something to the effect of like, I understand. Uh, I didn't fully understand everything that had gone on. But what I wanted to convey was I understand she's really upset. She was very conflicted on it. Uh, there was a lot of drama going on and she thought she was doing what was best. I don't really know what else you say to someone who's crying and emotional. It's not my place to be like, screw you. You had a sucky vote. I hate you. Like that's not something I should be doing as a chair candidate. Like you got to navigate that sort of stuff carefully. Right. And again, Most people like, don't understand. I've watched you at LNC meetings. You are very professional and friendly to every single person in that room. Yeah. None of them have wronged you personally. You know, I don't, I handle my own battles. You don't need to go and be nasty to them on my behalf. That would be dumb for you to, be, to do. And in fact, at that meeting where they allegedly replaced me with John Wilford, I had a very civil conversation with Richard Longstreth. Does that mean I was in favor of my own removal? We talked for like 10 minutes. I'm not going to be right. a jerk to the guy. And it's just, if somebody's nice to you, like at the Pennsylvania convention, Valerie Sarwark left her phone on the bar. I tracked her down to return her phone. Like you just human, you're just being a basic, decent yeah. human being. And if I had seen, um, maybe not at that moment, but if I see Aaron Adams, even though we're not the best of friends crying somewhere, I probably would hug her too. And what a lot of people don't know, and I'm not going to give the details of it because it's private between Aaron and I, but she and I had a seven hour discussion the night before the removal vote or two nights before the, no, Wednesday. So it was like three nights before the removal vote. None of it had anything to do with the removal vote, just about personal issues and we cried and talked and whatever, even though I knew she was going to vote to remove me because I was trying to be her friend. Yeah. And, and it really, like all of this drama and conflict really shows you that there are people in the party who this is like their highest value. This is, this is what they live for. They're not interested in de-escalating conflict. They're not interested in pushing past the drama. They love this drama. That's why they're trying to amp it up. I anticipate that it's going to be hideous between now and Reno. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And you and I don't have a lot of ugly skeletons in our closet. So this is all they've got to throw at us. So they're going to throw it at us as hard as possible. People will comb through our social media. They'll look for anything they can take out of context. And sometimes they're just going to flat out lie. And it looks like there's been a little bit of both of that in this story, taking things out of context and also lying. Um, and I, yeah, I don't want to call anyone by name, but um, stop lying. Thank you. Yeah, like, let's just, just de-escalate this. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it was, 
you know, by this evening now, I'm finding it almost humorous. But this morning, it was extremely, it was extremely hurtful to 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 wake up to, and I can imagine how you felt, Angela, because you know we're in different states. You might have thought I believed some of this, and what was the first conversation I had? I I wrote to you and said I absolutely 100% do not believe a word of this because I know what happened. I know what happened, and let and something I want to point out here and how this makes the opponents not look like the most professional people is it is funny that you as a chair candidate were trying to broker some kind of peace to keep the party together whereas Whitney Bill you didn't try one time to de-escalate not once she did nothing yeah we really gotta you know I don't want to I don't want to no personal attacks at her coming out of me, but we've really got to start understanding what the role of the chair is and what you've got to do in that position in order to move the party forward. And part of it is conflict de-escalation and you can't ignore it. You sure you certainly shouldn't engage in it, but you can't stick your head in the sand either. And you can't claim innocence because we all know what's going on. We've all seen it. You know, she's been in the room. We really need to move past this kind of behavior if we're going to make any gains politically. This this is just like, can you imagine? Can you imagine like CNN or whoever? Like, I know they're a joke and they suck, but like, what would they report <laughs> on on the Libertarian Party? They'd report on this. They'd report on Facebook gossip. That's the that's the best thing that we've got for them. It's it's so cringe. It. It, it truly is. And I just, I wanted to, I wanted to put this to bed that yeah. there is, there, there's no rift in at least this part of the Mises ticket. You know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I don't know. I, I don't even know how people believed it even for a second. And if someone did, you know, maybe yeah. I'm a bit gullible sometimes too, but a moment's reflection, I think would show you how, and how this reflects much more badly on them keeping this 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 hot smoking gun secret for nine months until two and a half months before convention really yeah and the way i I put it you put it to you is like yeah you fundraised and they would be committing fraud if they were helping hide this dirty secret you allegedly had on how you were trying to stab me in the back no there was no nobody in the mises caucus put up another candidate I mean, if there was yeah. if there was really like much to this, you would have seen someone to try to get. I'm I'm not nominated for anything, you know that mm-hmm. that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, I would I would ask that people don't uh, immediately jump to conclusions and believe everything that's said by someone who hates our guts either. That's probably a really good indication of whether or not the information is uh, is totally trustworthy. But you know they're going to throw everything they have at us. At, between now and Reno, this is the this is one thing. That it'll be something else again, probably in a couple of weeks as this dry, dies down. Um, yeah, and they're just desperate because they want to maintain control of the organization. And, you know, I understand that this is politics and it's going to get dirty, but at the same time, as libertarians, I believe we're called to a higher standard of behavior than other political operatives, and and we need to start doing that. I absolutely agree. We did receive a couple super chats, so I will get with you afterwards to find out where, because okay. I've always kept my word. I, I send you, I send you half. Anyone else who wishes to support our campaigns, again, any super chats will be split. Um, but something that um, really struck me about this is I wanted to offer you congratulations because they must really, really fear you. <sighs> Because for a while, amongst LNC members, I was the most hated and feared person. But apparently, it was worth it to them in order to make you look like a bad guy to raise my sympathy factor by 100. Because if what they were saying was true, oh my goodness, this poor girl, she got backstabbed by her friends on the LNC, and now she's getting backstabbed by another friend. Like, all of a sudden, I'd be martyr times 100. So they must, in order to risk that... Really, you you are a dangerous woman, Angela. Don't. D- <laughs> That's what everybody's saying on the internet. I'm a I'm really scary lady. Oh my goodness, this all I can say is I think both you and I um, can promise that if 
to the best of our abilities and as far as it is within our control, you know, we're, we're, we're both people of faith. And as it says, you know, as much as depend upon you, be at peace with all men, but sometimes yeah. it doesn't depend upon you. Sometimes other people are choosing to be at war and do terrible things. But, um, I think as far as it is within your, you or I's control, if, both of us are elected or either of us are elected that the next LNC is not going to be like this. Correct. This Correct. is an utter, utter embarrassment to Liberty to be, to be acting this way. It's like with those two, dude, you already threw me out nine months ago. You can't let it be. You got to just keep rubbing salt in the wounds. It's called what's being, what's a sore winner. And you know, all of us need to learn to human better you and I and them as well, which is why I'm not sitting here cussing and using the worst possible invective I can. I'm trying to be very reasoned about it. But I think sometimes we all need to step back and remember that we are all human beings here that have feelings. And when the camera is off or the keyboard's away, things hurt. You know, things hurt. Yeah. Real friendships get ruined over things like this, and it's not worth it. If the Libertarian Party is to be about anything, it should be about people. Not politics yeah. first, people first. We are here to make people's lives better. If we're not even making each other's lives better. Absolutely. You know, and I know Angela would do the same thing with me, and it's the promise I made to her months ago. If I ever have an issue with the decision she makes or something she's doing, she will hear about it first from me personally, just as yep. she has always done with me. And that's the way it should always be. And believe me, this LNC, before I lit them on fire, they heard about it from from me personally first. You guys will get to see it all real soon on the secret list, apparently. But... This isn't true. And somebody asked about some other rumor. We might as well address this one while we're here. One second. And thank you, Michael, for the super chats. I haven't been thanking people properly. Thank you, Matthew Lucas. Thank you, Fidalgo Files. Um, there was one other. There was weird rumor that was put here. One second. Okay. Um, I'm Spider-Man. It says, a v oh, that's true, though. <laughs> A variant of this rumor is that Angela McArdle has urged the Mises Caucus to withdraw its support from me. Is this true or some variant true? No. <laughs> there's, not been, there's never been a board vote on removing you. Right. Nothing like that. And I just want people to think through things logically. And just think through this logically. Anyone who has heard this rumor. Most people in the Mises Caucus are not on the board. I'm not on the board. I think it's pretty apparent that the average Mises Caucus person supports Angela and supports me. What do you think the reaction would be from the average Mises Caucus member if they did that? Even if you think you're the Mises Caucus are evil, they're not stupid. That would be a dumb move at this point in time. Like it's not even remotely believable. It's not even there, remotely believable. There were, there were a couple of things that probably contributed to that rumor. One is things were very heated and tense after you got removed. Of and course. there were people who were concerned about some of your outbursts and paranoid that you were going to go after me. Um, and we also have at several points have talked about not doing endorsements for all positions. So if you put all of those together and you're suspicious, then that's probably how you could come to that. Um, and you told me about those concerns yeah. immediately after those concerns were raised was when you and yeah. I had that very, very candid discussion. Like yeah. there's nothing that has happened here that hasn't been completely out in the open between the two of us. There's been nothing that I don't, I know some people aren't going to believe this, but the way the Mises caucus behaves in its professional in its political strategy has been uh, at least towards me and anything I've observed, absolutely professional. If I'm, if I have any concerns, if I'm upset with anybody who's on our slate or on our board, we get on the phone or we get in a zoom call and we talk to each other because that's the best way to do it. Cause if you, if you let things simmer for a long time, then that's how 
that's how relationships deteriorate and you, you erode trust and then it, it breeds conflict and resentment. Uh, and that's something that we've really got to move past. So, you know, rumors are going to fly about this, uh, probably, a, you know, there's going to be a lot more drama about the vice chair race. I am sure they will try to weaponize that conflict. Um, who knows what else, you know, I was, I was sick in the past. I was very ill. I anticipate that that'll probably come up and people will say, I can't do my job, you know, even though I'm in pretty good health now. Um, you know, oh whatever, my God. I'm sure. I You are the Energizer Bunny. I'm an Energizer Bunny myself, but you are an ener Energizer Bunny. Um, yeah, and, and there I'm, are, I'm sure that there, there are, are people in chat things, trying right? to talk like, about the vice chair thing. And I'm just going to tell you honestly, this was addressed with, with Angela and Michael Heiss. And I will defer to that because I am not, I'm refusing at this point to drag out these particular conflicts. They've been addressed on video. Um, if that isn't satisfactory to people, I don't know what to say. Everyone knows that I am very, very loyal to Joshua. There's personal reasons for that. Joshua had my back during a very dark time. And that's just the way it is. It's already been addressed by Michael Heiss and Angela. If that response isn't sufficient, I'm not getting in the middle of that. I'm just yeah. not. And I'm not asking Joshua to get in the middle of this. We are handling it. Um, dragging on these, to me, the, the, the social media drama isn't helping the party. It isn't helping Liberty. I believe in addressing it one and done and to keep dragging it out. It's either sufficient or it isn't. Um, I've already stated my position with Joshua and Eric is also a very dear friend of mine. Um, a long time ago, I made, you know, a long time ago on a video of Joshua's, I had endorsed him and a lot of people weren't happy with that. And Angela and I talked about that. Um, but Eric would also be an excellent vice chair candidate. I know some there people don't agree with me on that. I've worked with Eric. He's a hard worker. He's a nice guy. I am a very, very, very loyal person person and I owe Joshua a great deal and I'm very very loyal to Angela the same loyalty I am showing to one person I would show to another and to me that's an example on how we can agree we can disagree agreeably and I think Absolutely. the answer that has come out on that is vote your conscience it is it is. And this is like a normal thing, right? Um, what's not normal is to demand 100% obedience and to, to literally do every single thing in lockstep. Even when we do caucus votes and recommendations, like no one gets kicked out if you don't uh, follow. Like no one's like hovering over your shoulder to see what you're doing. It's just like, you know, it's, it's like a prisoner's dilemma. The more we deviate, the more we can screw ourselves over. So vote your conscience and try to keep our objectives and our main goal in mind. Right. That's how I talk. That's how I talk to people in California at any state convention. When people ask me advice or they have a question or they're like, oh, I don't like this person or I don't know, you know, I'm like, this is what we did. This is why we're deciding it. You know, you're not in trouble. There's there's no like, you know, kicking you out if you don't do it. Just, you know, do what you think is best personally. And and that's really I, what we and I just, do, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's what the whole organ. That's how the whole organization should operate. We have been operating like it's like a straight up battlefield and we're at war with each other and that you can't there's no organization that's successful when they operate that way. Nothing is. And yeah, as and I know some people are going to get mad at me for saying that I think Eric Rodsepp would be a great vice chair candidate. I know he's done some things I don't agree with. That picture with Joe Bishop Henchman was a stupid thing for him to do. But you yeah. want to know something? All of us have done really, really stupid things in our life. Um, I, it just is the way it is. Um, no so, one's perfect. I mean, I that's my opinion. Yeah. I kind of wish I hadn't chatted so much with Chris Lucchini, but, you know. Trying, you gave him the benefit do, of the doubt. I and I do that, trying too. Trying to do the best. <laughs> You know, I, I do that too. And I hope this puts to rest any rumors. I am 100% behind Angela. I have endorsed Angela from the beginning. I have never wavered from that. And she's the first chair candidate I have ever 
I think, openly endorsed before I had avoided that. For the same reason you said, when you're running for LNC, you might have to work with people you didn't endorse. And it can be very, very awkward. Even before we found out JBH was corrupt, it was very, very awkward because I knew I wasn't the secretary he wanted. Right. You know, and I try yeah. to avoid that awkwardness. And the reason why I broke from my practice this time is I just saw so much bad character that I said, these are desperate times and I am going to put, I'm going to go be, go, not do what I typically do. Um, right. And I'm a hundred percent behind Angela. I believe Angela's a hundred percent behind me. We are friends outside of even just being politics. And no matter what happens, I wish people would realize that Reno and all of that is looming really large, but you want to know what the next two year LNC term is going to go by real fast. And all of us are still going to have to work in a party together. And yep. these bridges and things you guys are burning down five years from now, you're, you're going to have some regrets. And yeah. I really feel bad for the regrets you're going to have because these two years are going to go by fast. And you might think yep. this is the biggest thing in the world right now and it is worth doing these despicable tactics over. It's not. It's not worth it. I agree. Yeah, I'm supporting Karen Ann for secretary. I want to make that really clear. Um, I will also say that I have had a cordial conversation with Tyler Smith because I have reached out to almost almost everyone mm -hmm. who's running for an LNC position. I have a cordial, uh, friendly relationship with Tony DiRazio. I'd consider him a friend. So do I. Like, yeah, it's like that, we should normalize that. Like you shouldn't look at someone being friendly to someone running against you and, and think like, oh, there's something weird or, or suspicious going on. Like we need to, be, and on another thing that happens sometimes on that note is people kind of waterfall, right? You want, run for one position, drop down and get another. So, you know, again, I'd prefer the Mises uh, slate that we're that we're hoping to get elected. But in the event that it's not, I don't want to be running with people who hate my guts because I've called them like awful names or said they suck or whatever. Like, you know, we're, we're trying to get through this, but we're we're also like plan B is to be able to get along with anybody else in the event they get elected so that we don't get stuck with a toxic LNC again, because that is what Correct. we have right now. It's absolutely, really it, in a weird way, it was a blessing in disguise. I got removed, not just because I could help Delaware, but because I am, I can't tell you how grateful I am to be away from the self-destructive blast radius of this LNC. They've gotten more toxic since I've yeah. not been there. Like yep. th that and, is what, your, what's crazy. And, and, and to your credit, you have, you seem like you're doing a lot better actually right now. Oh yeah, because so, yeah, I am. I am doing a lot better. That was not a healthy. That was not a healthy environment. And I too have had Tyler Smith is a friend of mine. I've had very cordial relationships with John Welford. I've candidly said that I don't think his work product is good, but he is a nice guy. He is a mm -hmm. genuinely nice guy. I can't speak to Tyler's work product because I've never seen it. They're both Pretty. nice men. Um, I've had Steve Dawes back on my show. I've got a good relationship with him. I just think yep. Angela's the better candidate. Yeah, you know, I I'm not going to say nice anything messages. bad about Tyler or Steve. If Nick runs, I'm probably not going to say something nice about him. I will be honest. Um, Fair but I don't, I'm not going to say anything bad about Tony. I'm not going to say anything bad about Tyler. I'm not going to say anything bad about Steve. If someone's work product is bad, I'm sorry. I am going to mention that. But as a person, John Wilford is a wonderful person. He's never been like a douche. You know, he seems like a super, super nice guy. I could see why he was a popular Texas chair. And I actually think he would probably make a really good regional representative because he's a people person. He's not a there minutes person, but he is a really good people person. He's always smiling. Like, how can you dislike somebody who's always smiling and it's not an evil smile? You know, everybody has their strengths to play to. 
you know. So I'm going to let you go, Angela, because I know you have another appointment. And I think, yeah. I, nope, I'm right on time. I kept my promise. And I know you, you probably are. have some, th some things to do between then. Everyone else, I'll see you in about a half an hour to talk about LPPA. And that will probably be a little bit more spicy than this. But I'm glad we could put this to rest. And my heart's desire, Angela, is that we both get elected. And I am the best secretary I possibly can be for you in order to help you succeed as LNC chair. Thank you. Same to you. And I have tremendous respect for your work ethic. Hardcore worker. Right. All right. You, have Thanks, a, you have an awesome night. Good luck with your next meeting. Bye-bye. How we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business, not because they want to.